Good afternoon, and happy Mother's Day to everyone. <coughs> there are many joys in motherhood, as we all know, for those any of us who are very lucky to enough to have experienced it. Uh, we're thrilled to have a young life to gr help grow and develop and become a vital part of the world. It seems like the ultimate in creative work, doesn't it, to have to have children to watch them and, and participate in their development. My purpose today is to encourage you, whether you have been blessed to be a mother or not, to gain insights into what the joys and trials of life can, can, are and what they can teach us. When those of us who are women, and we hope godly women, women who are interested in godly things, we long to be the perfect mother, or the perfect woman, or, well, perfect woman or mother. And so I want, and where we find a description of this paragon is in Proverbs 31. Uh, most of us are very familiar with the scripture. Let's take a quick look at it. Uh, this is presented, of course, in, in idealistic and poetic terms was almost certainly written by a man uh, because, of course, it was, uh, it was written a long time ago. And I'm going to read, read to you some out of uh, the New King James. This is Proverbs 31, and it starts out in verse 10, we'll go verses 10 to 16. Who can find a virtuous wife, it says, or it could be a woman, uh, for her, her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts in her, so he will have no lack of gain. You see, this is a man's perspective. You know, uh, his, his, this is uh, from his perspective. He will have no lack of gain. She she does him good and not evil all the days of her life. Now here is we're getting into to some things of motherhood. She seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. She's like the merchant ship. She brings her food from afar. She also rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and a portion for her maidservants. She considers a field and buys it. From her profits, she plants a vineyard. And then we'll skip down a little bit. She is not afraid for snow for her household, for all her household is clothed with scarlet. She makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband, back to her husband again, is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. So he's honored and respected, partly because of her. She makes linen garments and sells them and supplies sashes to the merchants. Okay, that's, that, there's more, and certainly you can read it on your own. But we get the message. This woman's a paragon. For all of you women here, you ladies, does this sound like your life? <laughs> Doesn't sound like mine, oh my. You know. I have to say, uh, well, I look at this, and, and okay, look, let's look again at some of the things that she does. She seeks wool and flax. She's weaving her own high-quality textiles. She brings her food from afar. That sounds like gathering exotic ingredients for her gourmet culinary, you know, culinary creations. She rises while it is yet night to provide food for her households and servants. Yeah, now I've done that but not always cheerfully. And <laughs> there aren't any employees or servants for me to provide for, just the more grumpy family members who are really tired of my cooking and what I can do at that time of the morning. She buys a field. Okay, she's investing in real estate. And on her own, too. There's no mention of her husband doing this. She's out there on her own. I, I, well, I'd like to be able to have say, say I have done this, but I have not. And now she plants a vineyard. She uses the profits from her business of selling uh, her high-quality textiles, her linen, and so to, to the merchants to buy to expand her her holdings into other business interests. Now, this is wonderful, but this is pretty idealistic. I, I think it's it, it, not me, not by any stretch of the imagination, and maybe it isn't you either. What I found in motherhood and I think wifehood too, because they think all go together, or even if I were just on my own. Uh, it's not this happy, fulfilling life filled with creative endeavors, 
What I found is what I would call the title of this little message, Long Days of Small Things. Long days of small things, endless loads of laundry, trips to the grocery store, uh, cleaning up messes without end, working, weeding the garden, working hard to earn a living, to help provide for our families, and always on a modest budget. And then, at the end of the day, falling exhausted into bed at night. Now, does this sound a little bit more like your lives than, than, than the Proverbs 31 woman? I, I love the Proverbs 31 woman, but boy, is she, she is so far out of my league. It's just, okay, we'll, we'll stop with that right now. But now, we come to the children. Yes, the children. Now, this is what motherhood is really all about. And we love them. These are wonderful people. These, these young wives that, and, and they're the most important people in the world to us. Uh, we do anything we could for them, and they're our children. But, and we're celebrating motherhood today, and this is what we should. But our children are wonderful people, they're a delight, they're a joy, but they are their own selves. They're not miniatures of me or, or, or copies of what I'd like to have them be. They're their own selves. They are made in God's image. They're individuals, and they, but they have, they have to find their own way in life. They just can't do things just because I want them to. They can't, and they shouldn't. Uh, <clears throat> they, they have their own unique perspectives. They don't always appreciate the things that we have to do for them, or we want to do for them. They don't see how it's important. Sometimes they think, I, I know they think, you're just trying to make my life miserable. I know you lie awake at night. You're dreaming up ways to make me unhappy. And you've succeeded. You've succeeded, and I'm going to let you know about it, too. Have you, ever, have you ever experienced that kind of, yeah, by the way, we, I think we're all, we've all been there. And sometimes, as they grow up, into being the people that they want to be, not necessarily the people we would like them to be, we find that they make decisions that we disagree with, that we cannot, we can't agree with them. And then our lives are filled with conflict. They can't understand why we say so, no so often. Too often they think we're just trying to, to ruin their lives. Have you ever heard that expression? You're just ruining my life? <laughs> I'm afraid I have. And this growing up transition, I think it's harder in every family. I hear enough chuckles, but I think some of you, some of you understand it. And it's hard for everybody, but I think perhaps it's especially hard on mothers. Uh, that somehow or other, maybe it's just, I just think this or it just seems so, that we're so emotionally invested in the children that our that we took it way too personally. We know, we know, this, they've got to do things on their own, but we're still taking it personally, at least I am. And then, so, so in spite of all the joy of motherhood, and there is, is so much joy, <clears throat> there's also a lot of pain, or there can be. And have you ever felt, as a mother, or a parent, or just with life in general, helpless, helpless, and even hopeless once in a while. You know, in spite of yourself, I think things are hopeless. We see what our loved ones do, sometimes the choices they make, the troubles that come on them. We love them so much, but there's just nothing we can do to fix it. Here is the bright spot to me. When things seem so bleak, when trouble comes, and there's nothing we can do, God has graciously provided us a gift to savor. Something I think of and like to call the gift of incompetence. <laughs> incompetence. What? You say, what's that? What's the gift of incompetence? Take a look at 2 Corinthians 12, beginning in verse 7. <clears throat> Paul tells of his life. And lest I should be exalted above measure, a thorn in the flesh was given to me a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. 
I don't want anybody to think I'm talking about that a thorn in the flesh is our children. They aren't. Not at all. But there's an application here, I think. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, he says, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, for when I am weak, then I am strong. I think we have an application here. When we're weak, confused, frustrated in parenthood or in motherhood or in life, the Lord gives us the gift of realizing our own incompetence. It's this, this, this realization of who has the strength is really the source of the greatest strength possible. The Lord is there with us in all of our troubles, walking beside us, holding us up, and making us strong. In conclusion, and this is the conclusion, I'm a little ambivalent about the Proverbs 31 woman. I think I always will be. No way will I ever rise to her standard. But there are two of her admirable traits that we can all aspire to and expect some success in. <clears throat> Look at Proverbs 31, 6. 26, I'm sorry. 31, 26. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and on her tongue is the law of kindness. I love that. Wouldn't you feel like your life had been blessed if that could be said about you? If that is said about you, you think, whatever else, there's some success in my life. And of course, as we know, we know where to get wisdom. Uh, James, James tells us that God promises to give wisdom to those who ask. And James 3 tells us, what this wisdom from God is like. It is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good foods. That's, those are traits we need in motherhood. Those are traits we need in parenthood. Those are traits we need in life. And God is kind. He'll give us, he'll give us that kind of wisdom. That's his kind of wisdom. He's pleased to share these gifts with us and in our weakness, we can be strong in him.